So my hope is that you came into this class with knowledge about ideas of change and percentages. So uh, the idea of absolute change, relative change, and a rate of change. So uh, an absolute change is, that's just a subtraction, like the numerator of our slope, change in output or change in input. So if I just subtract two numbers, I get absolute change. Relative change is when we look at a percent change. So relative change, percent change are synonymous. And then average rate of change is when we divide some change by some other change. And the, the change we divide by is often time, but it doesn't have to be. So here I'm asked to identify what type of change each of these relates to. And something does not seem right about my share. I do not see the green share box. What do you guys see? Do you see problem number two? I see it. Okay, just the box isn't there. All right, let's keep going then. So uh, if I just have a percentage on its own, that's the idea of relative change, pretty straightforward. If whenever we have a ratio, that's a rate of change. Rate means to divide two things. So that one right there would have to be an average rate of change. And then just a number is the result of an absolute change, which is a subtraction. So 30 could, could be uh, an absolute change, just a subtraction. So this is supposed to be a reminder about some stuff you learned in old previous math classes, but I wanted to remind you about terminology. Absolute change is a subtraction. Relative change is uh, a percentage and rate of change is a fraction where we have some type of number, in this case, dollars divided by another type of number, in this case, years, dollars per year. All right, a little playing with graphs there. Skip that one for now. All right, so this one relates to some ideas I was talking about earlier where what does it mean to have a positive slope? What does it mean to have a negative slope? And another idea is, is steepness and shallowness in graphs, which I didn't mention earlier, but I want to now. So I'm gonna go over to my notebook and scribble a little bit. So if I consider a grid like that, and I'm gonna make a copy of it to reuse. If we have a line and the line heads down like this, that line right there is gonna have a negative slope. It's going down as we go from left to right. that over, oh, come on. Sometimes my whiteboard's a little finicky. If we have a line that heads up as we go from left to right, that would have a positive slope. Again, that is up as we go from left to right. Now, another important idea is the idea of steepness and shallowness with slopes. And so I'm gonna draw a line that in my opinion is right in between steep and shallow mathematically, which in reality is a whole nother story. Let's say that line right there. So that line right there, I was attempting to draw the line y equals x. If you think about the equation y equals mx plus b, that equation could be rewritten as y equals 1x plus 0. Right? Plus 0, not much happening there. And multiplying by 1, I get the same thing. So that simplifies to y equals x. My point is this one right here has a slope of m equals 1. So I'm going to call that kind of like a neutral slope. 
if something has a steeper slope than that, then I'm gonna say it's steep. And if something's below that, I'm gonna say that's shallow. So then we'll call graphs that end up up here steep, and then graphs that end up down here shallow. So if I were to graph a line like that, it would have to have a slope of less than one. So maybe that one right there has a slope of say, oops, m equals one third, for example. If I were to graph something and it had a, it, oops, on the line, try that again, and it was angled above that line y equals x, then I would say that line is steep. And maybe this one right here has a slope of about m equals four, for example. So for steep, my kind of cutoff is one is in between. And then if your slope is greater than one, it's pretty darn steep. And if you have a slope that's less than one, then I say that's shallow. And I wrote a zero up there. So steep and shallow. Now the question in the homework doesn't really reference steep and shallow, but they ask you to make any line with a slope that's greater than one. So just kind of playing around here, the slope would be one if I went up one over one. So this slope is exactly one. I want the slope to be greater than one. So that means I have to go up more than I go over left and right. So that one right there would be a line that is a slope of greater than one. You can make any line you want. It doesn't have to go through the origin. I could move that point over and this point over. And my claim is that one has a slope that is greater than up one over one. Here, any line with a positive slope that's smaller than one. So a slope of one starting anywhere, maybe I could start here. That would be up one over one. I want this to have a slope smaller than one. So that means if I go right more than I go up, this one would have a slope of one half because I went up one right two. So now I have a positive slope. It's going uphill left to right, but it's shallower than a slope of one, smaller than a slope of one. And anything will work as long as it's positive and has a slope less than one. So there's lots of possible answers to that one. A line with a slope of negative one. I'm going to think about that for a second on paper. What would a slope of negative one be? I haven't really drawn that here. Maybe that one. So if m equals negative one, think about rise over run for a minute. How could we write negative one as a fraction? Well, I could write it as negative one over one. Negative over a positive is negative. One over one is one. So this one right here from some starting point, like maybe that graph up there would be to drop one and then go right one. So it's possible this has a slope of negative one. So starting at any point you want, drop one, go right one, and that would have a negative slope. Notice it's going downhill from left to right. So that's a possible answer there. Oops, I forgot to click my point. All right, a couple other tips on the homework and we can look at more of this next time. Uh, there are problems that are kind of like our soft drink consumption problems. So I highly recommend you rewrite this information on paper and do some calculations. So it's very similar to the soft drink problem. This one is very similar to soft drink problem. You just got to read this carefully and put that information in a table. If you get stuck, let me know. I'll get back to you with a video or we can go over it in class next. That one has a table and a spreadsheet for which we're asked to double check some information about it. I'm going to leave that one for now. Uh, and then this again is pretty similar to that milk soft drink problem. It's a little bit simpler. And the same thing here, I added an extra video at the top. So the last few problems in this homework set are similar to that soft drink problem. You're going to get more practice with the same kind of thing. All right, we are.